so welcome everyone for the first talk of uh, that <laughs> seminar for this call. Um, if, uh, so we have today Jimmy, our new poster, telling us about towards a hacker of field view. Thank you. So, uh, so let's start. And today I'll talk about uh, work from three paper and also some of the ongoing projects. So, uh, the first, first of all, I'll, I'll give a brief introduction to some notions in uh, monumental category and fusion category. But uh, to many of you who have already heard about this, this might be a little bit too elementary. But yeah, I'll introduce some of them. And then I'll introduce a transparent gauge for computing uh, F symbols in a series of uh, fusion categories known as the Hagrabini family. And uh, I'll provide ex explicit solution for the hacker of H3, but I also uh, give some results on, higher, on, on other cases. And then we'll solve for one, one plus one D uh, topological field theory with local operators and defect uh, lines. And those defect lines uh, furnish the symmetry of the fusion category. And finally, we'll uh, construct, uh, uh, construct a spin chain uh, whose uh, interaction is uh, described by the uh, is, uh, is it described by projectors onto certain fusion channel of the hacker fusion category and study the uh, the ground state of a fusion chain. So, uh, first of all, we will be thinking about uh, fusion categories in terms of topological defect lines. So those are sort of like generalizations of ordinary symmetry operators. So remember that in the uh, case of ordinary symmetry operators. You have some co-dimension one surfaces here in one plus one D. They are just lines, and they can carry. Uh, uh, they are labeled by group element of your symmetry group. And when you encircle those uh, topological operator, uh, when you encircle a local operator by those logical operator, you're implementing the symmetry transformation prescribed by that uh, group element. And the one of the defining feature for these operators is that they commute with the Hamiltonian. So you can deform it uh, in, uh, in your space time any, any way you want, as long as uh, the topological line operator does not pass through any uh, charge local operator or other topological line operator. So we need, some, uh, we need some mathematical structure to describe this kind of uh, topological defect lines. And it turns out that the suitable uh, structures to describe those are that of the uh, fusion category. So fusion category is first of all a monoidal category with some additional structures and uh, properties. And here I'll introduce what makes a monoidal category. So for a monoidal category, you have a collection of objects. You can think of it as labeled in your uh, topological defect lines. So here, for example, you might think of F and H and G are some uh, finite group elements to label your line. And their fusion, their fusion is given by just the group multiplication. Of course, there will be general generalization of this uh, in the general fusion category. But this is the intuition. And furthermore, we require there to exist uh, a distinguished uh, object called the identity, which is uh, roughly speaking uh, identity symmetry transformation, which does nothing on your uh, local operator on your theory. And we require there to be an isomorphism from one plus any object to that object itself. And it can, you can uh, multiply it from the left and from the right. And uh, those are the data that, uh, that are associated with the identity. And finally, we'll have a, an isomorphism known as the associator. Basically, what, you, uh, what this means is that if, if you have three topological line operators, you can bring two of them together and fuse them together. And then finally, bring the remaining one to the uh, with the fusion result of the previous fuse and form a topological line operator. On the other hand, you can do it in another fusion order. And this two uh, fusion result should be isomorphic. Namely, if you, you perform your uh, fusion in one order, you perform the fusion in another order. There should be a way to map your result onto your friend's result. So th there is a, a isomorphism for this, uh, for, for this kind of uh, spaces. Okay. So, yeah, so, so for vector, uh, either with trivial or non trivial, uh, 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 
metric cycle, they are just group elements for vector spaces created by G. And for representations of, uh, for the category of representations of finite group, they're rep uh, representations. Uh, no, so uh, I'm not asking that uh, to be true. Yeah. And in fact, in the hack I'm going to talk about this is not true. Sorry? A top diagram? So uh, what, what, uh, what Hagra shows is that sometimes you can have F fused with G is not the same as G fused with F. Yeah, yeah. So in order to label that in Hagra, I'll give every simple object or isomorphism class of simple object a name. And then I'll just say that the simple object from this class and simple object from that class fuse into simple object from this class. So I give them names instead of I just write FG here. So here, this uh, FG is supposed to just uh, illustrate the property of, uh, of fusion product uh, in the case where it's a, uh, it's a finite building group. As a, yes, as a direct sum, yes. So, so that means that you have, uh, in, so that means that when you choose two representations, there are multiple channels, right? And there are, uh, there are more than one object that you can put. Uh, actually, I'll, yeah, uh, maybe, maybe I can write on this whiteboard or something. Yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and people on Zoom see the board? <laughs> yeah, we can see it. And you need to be able to perform. Uh, uh, you need to be able to perform fusion, and then you need to uh, have a way to uh, translate between different order of uh, associating uh, doing your product. And uh, and there are some further uh, uh, properties of PBOs that are also required for fusion categories. So, for example. Uh, a fusion category is not just a random monoidal category. It's a monoidal category with a rigidity structure, which means that for every object, there exists a dual such that uh, there is an empty map from X tensor with the dual FX to one, and from also from one to the X dual tensor with X. And you can sort of just think of it like a line uh, carrying the annual of X type from this way. And uh, the way I write it is uh, only uh, it's meant for one side dual. So, for example, I only put uh, x dual on the right 
right hand side of x, we can similarly have a left hand side q, and they might not coincide in the general category. So I will not I will not talk, talk about these details here. Yeah, and uh, with this q uh, maps, you you require that this kind of map, which is formed by uh, comp composing uh, uh, this kind of map of the evaluation with the co-evaluation to be just the identity map of that object. So this uh, furnishes the rigidity structure of, uh, of your fusion category. And for each, uh, so this is more about the graphical notation. So for each junction like this, where I have two, where I have uh, lines that uh, are joined by some vertices, this means that I have an object x here and y there, and then this vertices is a, a map from it, it, it's in the home space of uh, between x and y. And in general, this will be given a c-linear structure. It means that it's just a vector space, and and, and yeah. And then finally, we'll require the isot isotopy invariance of the uh, of our diagram. It means that if you have vertices and lines in your R manifold, and you can twist the lines. Uh, in arbitrary different way, and the 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 uh, the reason this gives the same result is precisely because the rigidity structure and some other uh, actions in the definition of the of the fusion category. So those are some of the properties of fusion categories that I describe in terms of topological defect lines. But they are by no means a complete. So if you are curious about the complete definition, you can look up look up, or I can just tell you. Yeah. <clears throat> The problem I always have with these things is that people often just draw a lot of pictures without any um, equations. So yeah. <laughs> isotopy invariance is this property of the way that the picture represents the mathematics, or is it actually mathematical? It's it's a mathematical. So so the the earliest uh, uh the earliest discussion of this uh, I I know is in uh, Kitai's uh, paper is about the Fibonacci uh, about the anion, and there's a potential on um, the way that you can twist the lines on your diagram, which should represent different morphisms, for example, but you can derive the, uh, the you can derive the some identity between what those morphisms are supposed to mean. So, for example, if you just uh, in in it, it, uh, so, so in the isotopy invariant uh, for, for formulation, for example, you can consider uh, the diagram without any extra external lens. So it just should, it should just evaluate to some complex number, and then you're if you're going to twist your uh, lines around vertices in some arbitrary way, then that's going to change how you evaluate this complex number. But you can actually derive that if you're if you allow for cert, only certain set of this kind of uh, wiggling, then it's going to give you the same complex number, and that's what I mean by isotopy invariant. So in a way, it still describes some non-trivial identity. But uh, uh, yeah, and for the TBO discussion, uh, there is a complete characteriza characterization of that by Xinming Zhang and other people in 2018. Uh, is it when you oh, so it's part of the. Uh, uh, theta in your uh, fusion category, in your category actually. So in, the, in in every category, you have objects and morphisms, and x are uh, in one of the morphism spaces between x and y. And furthermore, in fusion category, they are given this. This is given a linear structure, so you can just think of f as a living in some vector space. Yeah, you mentioned uh, you mentioned just a simple. Yeah. Yes. So if the, if x and y are simple mm -hmm. and they're distinct, does that mean? Yes. That means it makes the uh, home space be either uh, zero or uh, or one dimension. Actually, you can relax the one dimensional assumption to get more general uh, categories, but here the home space between x and y. So for simple objects, you can just think of it as to reduce all the transitions of uh, your finite. So, uh, so one of the data that uh, we should uh, solve for is the F symbol. So in uh, 
basically it describes the uh, what associated to to different configurations of topological uh, defect lines. And uh, for you can ask yourself this question. Suppose I just write down a random collection of simple objects, and we just ask for them to fuse with a uh, uh, with respect to some fusion rule that I just like, for example, you can write down the Fibonacci fusion rule where you have only one and an another object tau, and I ask for tau to be fused into one direct sum with tau. Then you should be, uh, in, in order for this to be a full fledged category, you should solve for all the data that uh, we, we need to describe this category. In particular, you need to solve for uh, the associator and you also have to provide a left and right unit to attach to objects, but the left and right units are sort of more trivial than the associator. And solving for associator, uh, even a fusion ring, uh, is a non-trivial task. And here we'll do that uh, with the hyperbasin family up all the way to uh, to the case where we have like uh, thirty simple objects. So, uh, so the F symbol they. As you can see, it describes two different ways of fusing uh, objects x1, x2, x3 into x4. And therefore, it should correspond to the associator isomorphism that I just described. So in particular, this uh, matrices, if you regard it as a, a matrix labeled by x1 through x4, and with the row and column index s5 and axis, axis, it should be inversible because it provides an isomorphism between uh, these two vector spaces. And one thing I, I did not put on this diagram is that there should be in general choices of spaces at each vertex, because as I said, those morphism spaces are still linear. Uh, uh, this category is still linear. So those morphism spaces have the structure of a vector space. So you can choose between different bases of your vector space and they will change the numer numerical value of F symbol, but they should still describe the same uh, category. So I did not put uh, those uh, choice of spaces here. I assume this choice has been done. And uh, so we should uh, solve for the F symbols for uh, uh, for the category we're interested in. We're interested in. And there is a constraint to this kind of F symbol isomorphism. So uh, F symbols or associator tells you how to go from one order of a uh, uh, fusing together lines to another order when you have three lines. But when you have more than three lines, there are actually more than one way you can go from any configuration to another configuration. And those arrows, those uh, different maps are connected by the uh, F symbols or associator isomorphisms I talked about. But there are more than one way to connect them. So for example, to go from this configuration to that configuration, there are two different maps. And you want the maps to agree in order for you to have a a, a, the, the, a good definition of uh, arbitrary diagram. And uh, this 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 particular case here is known as the pentagon equation, which requires the uh, diagram to commute or this two uh, sequence of maps to give the same answer. And it turns out that uh, if you if your associator or your symbol uh, satisfies the pentagon equation, then arbitrary diagrams field using the F symbol and also a joint of uh, uh, units is going to uh, uh, be, you can uh, unambiguously uh, evaluate those. And so uh, if we can solve for the pentagon equation, then we, we know uh, the data that we need to define our fusion category. And this is a hard equation to solve, as I said before. So those X, one, those X labels are just uh, simple objects in your fusion category. And for Hagar, you have six simple objects. And this uh, equation, this is uh, on face value order n to the nine uh, cube equation, because you can just uh, plug in different, uh, different X1 through X9, and they will give you different uh, equations. And furthermore, the number of variables is order of n to the six, where n is the number of simple objects in your uh, fusion category, as I said. So, of course, there are vast amount of redundancies in this uh, F symbol description. For example, if you change the basis, for example, you rotate the uh, basis in your uh, in some of the vertices, then you are going to arrive at different set of F symbols that they still describe describe the same same data. So they are subject to some uh, uh, gauge redundancies, but still the equation has a lot of variables and there are a lot of them. So we're going to introduce a notion known as the transparency. So 
it's already been known for a while that uh, the app symbol enjoys some symmetries and you can use to facilitate the solving of the uh, equation. Also, I just noticed that in, in, in your paper, and when you, you already described the, the superficial symmetry in your appendix, in your appendix. Yeah. Uh, so the, the, the reference I list here is, uh, is, is sort of a mathematical reference that is supposed to rigorously prove the superficial symmetry of F symbol in the uh, in this class of uh, different category. And uh, so uh, there are some symmetry, but we still need more to, in order to solve for a category that has many simple objects. So uh, motivated by uh, our, our multi motivated by uh, by our uh, our goal, and also by the later part of the uh, physical discussion, we we want uh, we want arbitrary diagram with a uh, invertible object. To be uh, to give uh, uh, to give identity when you uh, transform a diagram using the F symbol. This may, uh, by this I mean that, for example, if you have a configuration like this, where you have uh, three lines, you have four external lines, and it's a little bit too hard to distinguish between the orange and the pink. But the pink is supposed to just mean some generic uh, uh, generic uh, object, and the orange line is. Uh, one of the invertible objects. Then, when you shuffle the order of the uh, orange line and the uh, uh, pink line, it's it's there is supposed to be some uh, F symbol factor here, which is the isomorphism between these two configurations. But we require that there to be a gate for this to vanish, uh, for this to be identity. So you can trivially perform this kind of uh, uh, operation without introducing any uh, factor. And furthermore, for this kind of Situation where you have two lines running in parallel, you want to attach the invertible line to the uh, generic line I just drew here, and you want this also to be identity without incurring any extra factor. And this is different from the require, uh, requirement of uh, strict category for those of you who know strict category, because we, we still want our category to be a skeletal category since the isomorphism class only contains one object. And in general, it's not possible to uh, simultaneously uh, do this, namely if you want your uh, category to have just one object in each isomorphism class, while still have trivial associator. In general, it's not possible. But here we require that for uh, our high representation category, we would like this to be true. Although this is not a proof, this is just a wishful thinking, <laughs> I'd say. But could you give us a category that you might have to have? No So the representation, uh, the representation category of groups are not not transparent, I think. And uh, uh, the finite groups, the finite groups with a trivial. Uh, Trickle cycle. The vector space created by a finite group with trivial trickle cycle is, of course, transparent because it's already uh, uh, equivalent to a skeletal strip. Uh, so the, uh, uh, the associator is just uh, trivial here. And for 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 the vector with a non trivial free cycle, I also don't think it's possible uh, to make it transparent. So there are some examples I look at, and I guess they're, it's not possible really for them to be transparent there. But it turns out to be possible here. And I, I, I would say that I don't know what draws the line between the categories that we can make transparent or not. We just uh, propose it as a property, and it turns out that in the hierarchy of human vision category, uh, you, with this property, you can solve for the F symbol that satisfies all our requirements, and that's using a uh, so we usually simplify solving solving simple. There, there are also some physical principle. Although it's not that physical, it's more like diagrammatic uh, manipulation. Where uh, later I talk about something like this. For, 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 for a network of. Uh, 
probability of prefect lines like this, where there can be phases surrounded by some uh, some simple lines, and you can create something in the middle because you know that the uh, so the vertical lines uh, a, a circle of in a vertical lines should give a quantum dimension of that vertical object, and it uh, should be one. And uh, so you can you create something uh, in the middle of uh, of a phase with no operator inside of the circle, knowing that it will not change the evaluation of your diagram. But then with transparency, you can just uh, fuse that line into uh, onto your uh, uh, lines that constitute your network without introducing any extra factor, thereby relating configurations that should be different in general. So the way we use transparency is in manipulations like that. Yeah, so skeletal sequence theory means that each cosmological construct has only one object. So, for example, if in your general sequence category, you have cosmological constructs of objects, and then you, you, you just pick one from each of the class of your your, your genesis, and with the uh, with with the uh, property you can uh, doing uh, unit generation using uh, multi-plane, you can show that it's equivalent in your in the category of your different objects. And similarly, you can uh, show that any uh, category, monoid, monoid category is equivalent to a strip sum where the associated are symmetric from the strip zero. And so, again, you're changing the, the object content of your category. Yeah, so, what do you mean by local? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's something I forgot to define. But here, I say that uh, in a rigid monoid category, I require every object to have a duty. That's why you have this kind of uh, morphism. It's an X times X bar. When this morphism is an isomorphism, then uh, X bar is uh, X is uh, I call X to be X to be inverse. Uh, so when when uh, like the, the like the morphism is X bar. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 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 the morphism between X and X bar. So in, in general, X bar need not to be uh, in the same isomorphic class as X. Uh, yeah. yeah. So if you are just uh, talking about general X, then the morphism space may well be empty. Yeah. Yeah. But but. Uh, it's the the inverse the notion of inverse inversibility I talked about is a good thing because uh, uh, as, as a group operation versus versus a multiplication in, in general ring. So in group, you always can find an inverse element to some element such that their multiplication is one. But uh, in in the for example in the category of representation, for example, you talk about you have a spin class representation to them give zero plus one. But there is not a, a inverse uh, uh, representation so that they can become a to zero. Mm -hmm. So that's basically a notion of inverse. Okay, the vertical relative. 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 Yeah, so in particular, the hyper fusion category contains a Z3 uh, cyclic group as a, uh, 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 as a structure. So uh, by vertical line, I'll be, uh, I, I mean, those uh, Z and uh, abelian groups. So that's the, so here here are the objects of the simple objects of your, of the hyperism family. And you have one all the way through alpha to some power to QK. And those are just the Z2, Z2K plus one part. So, you know, uh, it, uh, so, so the classical example would be to put K equals one where you have the Z3 part in your fusion category. In general, you can consider uh, things like this. You can also consider even part that there are some issues with uh, solving for F symbol, but in principle, it can be done. Yeah. And uh, there are also part, this part where you have non invertible objects. And the fusion rule is given by this, where if you have, so the G1, G2 here just means the Z2 K plus one charge. So you merge with three becomes five and it's commutative. And uh, 
And for the remaining part, you have this kind of fusion, uh, fusion rule where rho fused with alpha g is going to give you alpha g inverse with this rule. So in, in general, it's, um, it's a non commutative fusion rule. And yeah. And so, as I said, one can consider the hyper uh, fusion category or the whole family first proposed by uh, Eugenia, I think, all the way to uh, some high, higher order of the uh, finite group. And uh, the A4 and F4 here I mentioned are, so let me explain this. So, as I said before, there are a huge amount of F symbols which obey a huge amount of uh, pendulum equations that you have to solve to actually get the data for your fusion category. And if you remember, it's something like n to the ninth for the number of pentagon equations and n to the six for fusion uh, for, for the F symbols. So here in principle, with, with n equals three, you should, uh, n equals six, sorry, n equals six for n to the three, you should have something like uh, order six to the uh, nine pentagon equation and six to the six variable modded by the gauge, uh, gauge redundancy. So here, after imposing the transparent Condition which relates different F symbol that differ by attachment of inversible line, and also using the tetrahedral symmetry in the literature, we're able to reduce the variable that we want to solve for to this kind of number. So it works properly like N squared, and it's a, a huge amount of reduction that enables us to algebraically solve for the value of the S F symbol, not just numerically. What, what are these yeah, so the S4 is the for uh, tetrahedral symmetry group. And the A4 is the tetrahedral symmetry group uh, without the uh, one, without a complex conjugate uh, that applies on the F symbol. So it's a subset of the tetrahedral group. And the reason we se we're separated it is because the, uh, we're separated is because the, uh, uh, the complex conjugate uh, part should introduce the, uh, so the complex conjugate will introduce the conjugate, uh, uh, complex conjugate for F symbol. And it's going to double your uh, variable because now you have to consider in general uh, complex F symbol and those can be split into a very imaginary part. And this is going to make our system harder to solve. So within the, uh, within the uh, A4 part, we only consider the, uh, the case without such a complex conjugate. And okay, but I assume that there's an action with respect to position. Yes. On, yes. On the yes. Uh, yes. Or if I remember correctly, for a class of uh, fusion category, now the vein fusion category, by by this in this literature that I talked about. Is that true at all? Well, so if I'm just going to. Uh, if I'm just going to give a hand waving argument, then I'll say that you can form a configuration where the topological lines uh, uh, are, are combined together in a shape like a tetrahedral. And those, if you have uh, six simple lines as your edges, and those four uh, vertices to represent the, uh, the movements and spaces on each side of your F symbol. So this to give you an evaluation of your uh, F symbol in terms of the diagram. And by tetrahedral symmetry, we mean that by rotating that tetrahedral, you are arriving, you, you, you are you are changing the definition of your uh, of your F symbol equation. So you should give different F symbols. But you know that it's the same tetrahedral, just the changes. So you should give the same value. So it's relating F symbol between different configurations. So it's a symmetry on uh, F symbol. And you can Sort of can we manage to succeed using this kind of argument?
Yeah, so we have the vertical symmetry, we have transparency property, and we reduce number of uh, variables. And uh, after reduction, you can just you, you can just see that uh, other all, all the f symbols are either trivial or can be deduced from the set of uh, nine uh, values here. Yeah. 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 So actually, the even so not only do I consider out, but uh, actually it's easier to solve for the f symbols in the case where two k plus one is actually a prime. So whenever there are some uh, some non-trivial factors in your two k plus one, there seems to be a more complicated structure in your f symbol. That so in the end, I'm going to use just some algebraic reduction Grobner basis to solve this system of Hamilton uh, equation. It turns out that it's easier to do that uh, in the case where two k plus one is prime. Then it's not prime. Then it, it, it's easier uh, it's easier for the odd cap case than the even case. But there's nothing preventing you from doing so for even case. We we also solve for the I remember Z four the center, but uh, it's not possible for us to prove the Z four simply because of the implication in the algebraic uh, equation. Uh, yes. Yeah. So for Z three, so the Hubbard case for interest scaling is given by this uh, set of nine numbers. And the Ys obey this kind of uh, equation. In general, we can solve for multiple solutions for up all the way to Z15. And furthermore, the solution seems to follow a nice pattern, at least for prime, uh, Z prime. And the solutions we found are given in are given by root of polynomials. A coefficient in this uh, rational field are joined by this uh, square root. And because because of uh, so uh, this part is already known by people. But because of the structure in the solution we found, we hope to generate it even further, but obviously not through a good good, good, good solving of the uh, Bortman basis. So this is so we're going to use this data to uh, in the later part. Okay, so again, this part is kind of uh, trivial for most of you already know about the PCFC and 
this happens. Uh, so we are going to use the hyper uh, different categories to give uh, one plus ID convergent performance mean theory with local operator and defect lines. And the defect lines may end on defect operators, they're finite, or they can, or maybe it doesn't end at all. And uh, so without defect lines, it's already known that those uh, one plus one D hyperarchy can be described by uh, a, a community of homogeneous algebra. So uh, the stru algebraic structure of community of homogeneous algebra uh, requires the existence of, for example, the product and uh, and uh, evaluation, and uh, such that you have this kind of uh, relation where uh, the uh, uh, where the product and the pairing give the uh, same result for different configurations. And it, uh, on the TKP side, you can think of this as uh, uh, as a consequence of uh, the topology, because if you require your uh, uh, product to be given by this kind of pair of pen, uh, uh, co uh, configuration, and your uh, pairing, uh, your pairing to be given by the uh, uh, evaluation uh, composed with the pair of pen, then it's going to give you two configurations where you have uh, three uh, three circles. That uh, maps into uh, the ground field, and that should that, that that should be the same no matter which order you perform the operation. So uh, that's guaranteed by uh, our uh, guaranteed by the topology. And here, uh, uh, in addition to the local uh, lo operator, we also have a uh, defect line. They may or may not end on a point-like operator, and there are some consistency uh, conditions on the data. That are uh, that we use to describe those defect lines and defect operators, and there are two uh, very important uh, consistent conditions, and I'll, uh, I'll describe uh, where they come from. So in general, you want to put your theory on a manifold uh, with uh, maybe uh, a, a manifold of uh, genus P, and you can draw lines on the manifold, and the lines may end or may intersect with other lines, and you want to be able to cut this manifold into uh, a lot of pair of pens and possibly some pairs with uh, homomorphic to a bit, such that you can evaluate the uh, result on each pair of pens, and then you can compose them together to have the evaluation of your configuration on a generic manifold. But we all know that if the, the way to cut a manifold into a pair of pens version from the root, there are multiple ways to do this. And uh, in particular, Feedback operator. So the first one, the top one, corresponds to the four functions here, where you have four defect operators at the end of a uh, conventional defect line, and then you cut it, and then it, uh, it should be uh, the same as another way of uh, forming the product of four uh, defect operators and cut it horizontally. 
So in, in particular, this is going to give you the product of two three point functions come over the uh, exchange uh, channel. And this is going to also give you a product of three point function, the sum over a different channel with possibly non trivial X symbol. So this is consistent condition on, on the defect three point function. And for the uh, torus one point function, it's given by this modular invariant uh, 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 consistent condition. And uh, I guess I won't go into detail here. I can talk about this later. But yeah, it's a classical result. Yeah. Can we Uh, yeah, so, so so if we thought defect lines, they are just going to describe the uh, topological field theory with local operators. So you have states, so you have tensor products between. It's just that we're not decorating our pair of hands, caps, and generic manifold with topological defect lines, and we should cover that as well. So now uh, we're going to investigate uh, what kind of uh, Representations under the uh, under the non invertible lines and the local operator uh, have. So uh, consider a state which is uh, neutral under the z three part of Hebra. So as I said, Hebra contains the z and uh, z three part. And uh, if it's neutral under the action of alpha, meaning that when you encircle the alpha, encircle the local operator with alpha, it's going to give you the same local operator. Then you can actually derive the action of rho on the state operator. And that is because of the fusion rule. So if you act with two rho, meaning that you're encircling the local operator, which is in the neutral sector, with two rho lines, then according to the fusion rule, it's going to give you one plus rho plus alpha rho plus alpha square rho acting on the same operator. But because if it's neutral under the alpha, it's going to just give you one plus three rho. So from this, we know the eigenvalues of the irreducible representation, and we label them as plus and minus representation. And finally, for space charge on the Z3, we show that it's actually uh, forming a two-dimensional event. So that's the uh, result you get from circling uh, 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 simple lines around some uh, op local operator that correspond to the event. And by doing this, we can actually uh, we can actually tabulate all possible number of uh, local operators and the uh, uh, defect operators that can end on uh, topological lines by considering uh, modular invariants of a configuration where you wrap a simple a, a simple line around a torus. So the modular invariants of this uh, of so if you if you have a torus and you wrap a row line around that torus, then you can evaluate the result in two different ways. You can either just cut through the line, and then you declare that uh, you're counting the dimension of your defect surface space. It should be something to do. You can also not cut cutting through a line using another line cycle, and that's going to count. That's going to count, uh, evaluate the trace of that operator on the untwisted surface space. Actually, include a picture here. Yeah. And this uh, condition tells you that no matter what number of you wrapped for a uh, local operator, uh, you have a, bet uh, a, a better, so remember that we have this kind of wrap, and you might you might come and say that, hey, I want to have one wrap in the plus case, two wrap in the minus case. But this is not going to be possible because the trace of your uh, untwisted shaper space is going to evaluate to something that is not integral because you have one, one uh, eigenvalue here and two of this part. And so we, uh, by requiring this to be, in the, the trace of row to be integral, we require you to have a uh, same number of plus uh, erect as the number of minus erect. And similarly for alpha. So you can tabulate number of operators. So here, the Z means the uh, number of local operators and the P means the number of point-like operators, which includes the local operator and also the defect operators that can end on a defect line. So if, if, in particular, you can just think of those local operators as ending on the trivial line. And we're going to study uh, one case here where we have uh, three 
uh, we have we have six uh, local operators, and in particular the not the invertible line, which are labeled by the group element alpha and alpha squared, cannot end at all. So we're going to be interested in this case where you have Christine point like uh, operator in this problem. So we we have some open data among the local operators and feedback operators, and uh, here. Uh, so the, the quantities uh, highlighted in blue are the uh, things that we should solve for. And the way to solve for the constraint on this quantity is by using uh, uh, source utility. For example, for the local operator, we know that they, they are described by the algebraic structure of the things uh, algebra, uh, convenience of things algebra. So if uh, you have three local operators in the set, and th this contains six because, the, because A can be one or two in, in the case where it's been. So if you take three and you want to form the OP of them, and you know that there are two order of doing so, then they should be, uh, the, the, the result given by the two order conforming OP should be the same. And it's going to give you constraints among the three beta and two. And furthermore, you can also have defect operators that are that live at the end of uh, topological defect lines of certain type. And then again, you can consider the defect op operator Fuse with some local operator or multi track operators themselves. And finally, you have action of um, the, the local operators like in this form. So, for, in particular, this is going to be a one action on some local operator called UA. And if UA is in the, the reduced form representation that we talked about earlier, then it's going to, to just give you either plus, minus, uh, eigenvalue, or zero. So, this, this slide, I I already sort of talked about, but the idea is that using transparency, you can formulate many uh, relations among different configuration of defect lines, and you can transform the label on the defect lines by arbitrary Z3 factor without uh, having to keep track of uh, the absolute order construction in this action. And furthermore, you can also have this kind of configuration where you're using uh, two local operators, then there are two ways to describe uh, this one of one is to fuse the local operator and then it becomes an action as well on the, the resulting local operator for some of local operators. The other is to consider uh, uh, consider uh, an F move which maps this into this kind of configuration configuration, then it's going to become a Q point function of certain defect operators because each uh, on each end the uh, if the non inversal line is circling a local operator, it's going to give you a sum of defect operators. So you have a lot, a lot of constraints. Uh, and in, in fact, you can just uh, fully solve the uh, data, all the data that I just uh, described by using the constraint that comes from uh, associativity and uh, modular invariance. And these are the data with the uh, six uh, local operator. And we similarly have uh, the data with two or four local operators, and you can in fact also go higher, but uh, this is uh, uh, this is lovely as well. And there's another interesting thing with this kind of uh, convenient feedback line. So we've been talking about manifold with boundary, but if your manifold is with boundary, then in principle your feedback lines can also end on boundary. And what this means is that uh, the boundaries. Are prescribed with some boundary condition for your theory, and when the topological feedback line ends on your boundary of your manifold, it's going to possibly change the type of boundary condition on your manifold. And uh, and uh, furthermore, by a classical result of uh, uh, more more in single, uh, the boundary the elementary boundary, boundary conditions are in one-to-one -one correspondence with the projective basis of local operators. So the local operators I just wrote, one, D, U, et cetera, we can transform it into a basis that, that, that uh, they are projectors and they correspond to those elementary boundary conditions. And because when you act the, look, act the topological defect line on the boundary conditions, it can only become a non-active integer combination of boundary conditions. This is the only allowed uh, Boundary conditions. So this means that the action of row on local operators in this kind of basis to furnish something called non-negative integer matrix representation. And here in one particular case, in the six local operator we talked about, we transform the six local operator into some 
uh, projector basis is just a linear transformation. And then the row action in that basis is like this. And the alpha, the zero three action is like this. And in principle, in other more complicated cases, this can be used as a constraint in solving your because the the requirement that this kind of matrix should be non-negative integer is very strong. And then finally, we're going in another direction to put the hyperefusion category on a spin set. So here, I'm going to construct a configuration like this. Uh, you can regard it as a fusion tree where the lines used according to the uh, hyperefusion rule. And we are going to denote a state which has level one, two, three, up to L by uh, this kind of, uh, we're going to denote this kind of conversion by this space. And in particular, so those A's uh, can be uh, labeled, say for example, simple objects in your fusion category. In the hyper case, we have six, so each of the sites can have uh, six, uh, uh, six different uh, states. Oops, sorry, not state, but yes, it's labeled. But uh, the, the, the thing that complicates the annual chain is that the silver space is, is actually not factorized in this, uh, in this situation compared to the ordinary spin chain because when you have some configuration here, then the fusion with bro should, uh, should only give result that, uh, that's uh, valid under the fusion rule. So some configuration are actually not allowed. And uh, with this kind of state, you can uh, construct a Hamiltonian by assigning energies to projectors. By this, I mean that consider an ordinary spin chain, for example, of spin hat particles, then you are going to, uh, so you can write each of the nearest neighbor coupling in terms of projectors onto total spin zero and total spin one subspace. And then sum to one, so you can just give number to one of them. In effect, this is going to assign different energy level to a local configuration which has total spin zero and total spin one. And you can tune the value of coupling uh, to arrive at different places. And in the case of high graph, you can look at a, a, a locally a three, three side configuration with two rows. And then you can do F, an F move to transform this into two row, a configuration where two rows fuse into something in the, some in the intermediate channel, then uh, becomes, uh, then again fuse with the uh, lines below. And then uh, you can do another F move to make it uh, into the, to, to, to restore the number of selected sites you have. <laughs> so in, print, in effect, it's, it becomes a mapping from a local configuration of three sites like here to another local configuration where you uh, change the site in the middle and through projecting through the channel I, uh, in, uh, in, in, your, in your F symbol. So if I sum over all uh, possible I, then this is going to be just the identity. Can this be described by having something graph like some of the F function? Uh, I, I, so I, I already described it using the F move uh, on the on the on the configuration here. Yeah. So so this part just means that I'm performing two F moves. One of them is to change it into a configuration where two rows first first fuse into some channel, wow. and then the other F move is going to uh, restore your original uh, lattice spaces, but then uh, so are you fusing two uh, additional rows? Yes, yes, yes. And the point is that because F, because F move is an isomorphism, when you sum over the different fusion channel, it should give you one. But by considering only a part of the uh, uh, projectors, you are you are uh, you can form a Hamiltonian where you are assigning energy preference to different local configurations. So for example, we can just write the Hamiltonian with something like uh, minus one times projector onto the road channel. That means that we are going to give a, an energy preference of uh, spins that fuse in the road channel. Why do you choose uh, all virtual rows? Aren't there many other yeah, things you can define? Like you can the in principle, you can. And actually there's a Z3 symmetry that's intrinsic in hardware. You can just change Every row into alpha row, and alpha square row is going to give you the same fusion uh, chain. But uh, in principle, for the match still, yeah, there are not equivalent. There's still things that are not equivalent. If you just change, if you just apply the global Z3 uh, change, then uh, it's going to give you the same answer. But if you are going to have different 
different. Oh, oh, you're going to put alpha. Well, if you're going to put alpha, then there's only one. So there's only one allow state if you're going to put alpha here. Because if you start with, say, row, a1 row, let's put a1 to be row. Then if those are all invertible line, then the a2 through a l will be determined through group, uh, through this multiplication. Yeah. So there's just one one thing you And here we are considering this configuration, and we are going to uh, write down our Hamiltonian using a projector. And no, so it's still maps uh lattice this lattice configuration to this uh to five lattice configuration do you mean number of sites or yeah but that's only a level of the uh, fusion graph in the end i'm composing two fusion uh, two two f moves such that it becomes a map from the original lattice to the same lattice so why does it not uh, if you sum over the fusion channel, it is. But uh, as in the spin type case, if you sum over projector, project into zero and one and nearest neighbor uh, total spin, then it's going to be identical. On the other hand, if you just consider Hamiltonian where it's like a projector onto zero total spin, onto total total spin, then it's not going to be identical. In fact, it's just going to be with suitable choice of partition. It's going to just be a hyper spin. Yeah, so uh, here uh, the numeric numerics we're, uh, we're doing are using the MP um, metric product step approximation for our uh, for our state in this uh, in this Hilbert space, and we're using DMRG and also exact definition to find the energy associated with ground state and excited state. I won't talk about the exact definition here, but uh, the idea is that. Uh, so as I said, we're uh, we're forming a spin chain where each side is labeled by the simple objects in your high graph uh, fusion category, so for two of those two, right? And then we're putting a hard color on the bound dimension of those matrices, and this in fact limits the uh, uh, entanglement uh, entanglement entropy of your of the answer. And furthermore, we are going to forbid this kind of uh, wrong fusion channel because you know that one choose with row cannot be one. We're going to forbid this kind of fusion channel by putting just a penalty term in the Hamiltonian. I guess you can do better with some other uh, architect architecture of major point of state. Uh, state is not uh, completely exact, right? But I'm not aware of this. So, so I think this. Oh, I already found it. What is the yeah, so so we're interested in some physical phenomena that has the hyperopposition hydro Some physical system, which may have some phenomena. At first, I talked about how to find that symbol that gives you the data for the hyperopposition uh, Looks just like you find the data and then you, you, you need to describe something with attribution. You find a graph, you find the Then I write down a one point five D political political sphere theory, and those lines in that uh, political sphere theory here's with uh, here's uh, according to the rule of hierarchical category, and I'm asking myself uh, what kind of theory can I get? What number of one states are we allowed? And uh, uh, ordinary spin chain by uh, 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 we have special attribution. And the, the difference is that I'm going to impose a different Hamiltonian on the spin chain. And also, the Hilbert space looks different because it's not specialized. It's, uh, it's uh, the Hilbert space is fully shaped by the fusion rule, by the law fusion channel to be something which is standard. So, uh, in particular, when you have, when you go to a large L limit, meaning that you have a large number of sites, then the dimension of Hilbert space goes like some number to the L. But that number is not an integer. Remember, uh, in the case of uh, hyperbolic distributed discrete plot through the chain over two, in the case of golden chain where you have one and five, it's just a golden loop. So that's what I mean by the paper space is a little bit peculiar. It's not. 
Yeah, I already know the data here because I can write down my information with it. And then I'm going to ask myself if this thing chain has this kind of Hamiltonian, this kind of symmetry, the hyper uh, symmetry, symmetry, what form state do I have? And I want to find and uh, what uh, principal behavior of the thing chain are there faces uh, on the first diagram that I can explore in this thing chain and any other thing? Yeah, in the in the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in this talk I'm not going to I'm not really going to talk about stuff like that because I already feel that it's not going to fit all the information in the talk. But there's some motivation from the subjective theory where people classify the algebra uh, and they found that uh, so some factors of algebra with this zero uh, factors of algebra with this zero factor is just repeating the factors. And uh, they classify this by uh, computing something called the index. And uh, in certain cases, one can show that the, all the non factors fall into some uh, internet family. That uh, you can write down the uh, in But in other, uh, for the other index values, the things become a little bit more exotic in that one can find sub factors that does not similarly fit into any non sufficient family. And one of the such sub factors, in fact, uh, is probably the earliest that people found, is a hybrid sub factor. And uh, in terms of function uh, theory, I think we have a lot about it. Yes, but, uh, I know that people have been trying to uh, compare uh, convergently with this with this this exact factor and after the division. So anyway, so that's the original motivation for studying algebraic functions. And people after that, people also found other factors uh, that are also not part of the human family and now have and I think for all these subfactors, the existence of the CFT that can subject the algebraic structure is not known. It's an open thing. Yes, yes. And in supposing that all the false statement in Python states we found are actually the uh, actually correspond to operators in some CFT. And furthermore, we can try to perform the best of the best study different cross uh, and other states of that thing. So, so, so that's part of the motivation for uh, for this uh, thing. Uh, I was just curious that uh, the Yeah, so Showing the Hamiltonian can be uh, it's, it's a little bit tedious, but can be shown. So, for, for example, we can consider uh, this kind of fusion diagram, but uh, write down additional uh, uh, simple simple lines uh, beneath this, and then you can use the transform gauge in F symbol. They are not probably not trivial to transform this fusion diagram again into a fusion chain with the original matrix configuration. And then we can show that uh, it's actually the action of simple lines are actually continuous with the with the original. Yeah. So so the the method we use to study this thing chain is by using the MPS uh, uh, in combination with the density matrix and the manifestation group. So with this kind of answer, you want to uh, low, you want to minimize the energy for a state, given our projection homogeneous. And then uh, DMR2 do, uh, does this by uh, iteratively replace each of the matrix plus by something, 
uh, that should uh, minimize the energy locally. And then uh, you sweep through all the metric block text uh, that uh, uh, together give you the your metric product state. And then you hope that after many, many sweeps through your uh, metric block, block and replacing each of them, you're going to find something that is very close to the ground state of uh, your of your condition. So there are some of the results from the MPS and the DMRG study of this chain. In particular, one of the things that you can study is the uh, uh, exponent, uh, which is the relation between the uh, energy gap and the logic state. And uh, you can, uh, if, if, if the dynamic exponent here is close to one, that, that's a very good ind indicator that you're arriving at something good for you. And you can also study the entanglement entropy, uh, which you cut. Uh, so this is something I forgot to mention. Actually, for this for this kind of intrinsic configuration, you can study it with a theoretic boundary condition, meaning that you're a homeland loop, or you can study with an open boundary condition. For example, you just put you just require the end of uh, the two end of your spin chain configuration to be some simple object, and that's going to break uh, the hydrogen from your symmetry. And the plots here are for the periodic boundary condition that you can similarly do the, the, the local condition, uh, open boundary condition. So here, you're going to cut the spin chain into two parts of a uh, uh, different length. So uh, by varying the part, uh, by varying the cut, you vary the length of uh, two different parts. And starting from zero all the way to again uh, zero for the whole spin chain, you have different entanglement entropy between those two parts. And then, if this uh, theory in the in the large uh, limit is going to describe a conformity theory, then we know that you have a certain scaling of the entanglement entropy with respect to that. And uh, the dots here are the DMRG uh, operation that I just described, where if you iteratively replace each uh, matrix block in your MPS approximation by a new matrix that lowers the overall ground ground state energy, and it seems to converge onto this line which uh, is, is expected uh, from from CFT. So that's one of the indicators. And furthermore, as I said, we can just compute a lot of uh, states, the ground states, uh, expected states of this spin chain. And there are some peculiar features. So first of all, this is from uh, I think uh, 15 plus, 15 logic plus. And there are some peculiar features. For example, uh, there, are side, there are some operators that seemingly lie outside of the SFT inserted bounds. But uh, uh, in our DMRG uh, experiment, we actually found that the ground state, uh, the ground state and the expected state behave very differently depending on whether your chain, the length of your chain is uh, zero mod three or not zero mod three. So things that uh, in a continuum, this zero mod three or not zero mod three should translate to, to some, some sort of a transverse part. And uh, the lightest uh, translation we're seeing in your, your uh, numerical experiment is actually a combination of the uh, ordinary lattice transformation together with this uh, shifting of this transverse part. So in this sector here, where you have momentum is exactly uh, five, which is uh, the length is, is uh, 15. So this should correspond to a unit uh, shift charge uh, in a continuum limit. And we, we, we are proposing this because we already, we also have the numerical results for the uh, length 12 and length 18 and other spin chains of other length. And we all see uh, some state they are exactly at the, uh, L over three uh, location. So we think of it as uh, operators coming from operators in the shifted uh, G3 charge sector. And you have operators, uh, you have your you have your vacuum and this operator here, which uh, it's almost directly on the, on the on the place where the component dimension and the, uh, the on, on the spin is equal to, we identify that to be uh, the shift tension in the positive CFT. And one can, in the future, one can also consider varying the coupling. So as I said, uh, uh, we construct this Hamiltonian by writing out a projector using Epsilon. It comes from our earlier presentation. 
but there are more than one possessor space to write out. In the Heisenberg space, uh, there are only two possessors, you are the one and the second one. So uh, you have only one and two possessors. In the Hyper case, you just only have four possessors to come to one by this in our configuration. So this means that you have three independent copies that you can pick. And by varying the copy, you are going to see the uh, how the ground state and the type of state change according to the training. And in some uh, region of the copying space, we're actually seeing uh, some uh, degeneracy in the uh, in the in the uh, excited state that persists in a two-dimensional area. So that seems to some uh, some sort of basis in this kind of thing. But this is very preliminary. So uh, we, uh, more data is needed in order to have a more rigorous training. And uh, the, the first next step is, of, of course, to identify the density realization of the data we just have. And actually, actually at first, uh, because of the uh, numeric, uh, because of the numeric, numerical result that the uh, critical theory seems to have a component part Q, and also uh, we identify something that seems to be uh, a component problem in our system spectrum. We, 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 we uh, think maybe it could be an orbital of some uh, free activity of living on forward and this gives rise to deep orbital. So this gives rise to the deep free symmetry. The newer result seems to suggest that this is not the case. So it might still be a safety, but, uh, uh, it, but, but may, maybe more serious one. And also, as I said, uh, in the transparent case, we are able to, uh, to compute the defining data for the cycles to the future cycles all the way to the future two. And we just go more to the computation parts of the more. But more importantly, there seems to be some very simple factor lying in this uh, action goal. So uh, one thing that might be able, what, one thing that uh, might be possible is to uh, just write down and uh, write down an answer, the first answer for the uh, D to, to take off one uh, F symbol and then uh, solve for the result, solve for the uh, uh, F symbol analysis. And this will prove the existence of the whole family of Hagar resuming at least with the uh, order of the Hadrian group uh, on. And uh, this is one of the uh, next steps. And of course, you can also use the F symbol from other D2 and F1 chain. Uh, it, it, use the F symbol from those categories and then construct similar chain and to study the first Hagar so there are many directions to go from here. Yeah. Did you not see the question to ask? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, so I think it's <coughs> two point zero zero something zero two. And with a different area of like point five or something. So at first we thought it was exactly Q because the integral power is Q, but there's a result by other group that gives the kind of you know, big higher density power. And furthermore, there's this result by Sigmarin and Sigmarin that also gives the thing that it seems to be greater than Q. So oh, and Combined thing seems to suggest that this theory does not have to be exactly as true. Uh, did you find several different uh, valid uh, Did you find several different valid uh, like in the same Oh, uh, we, we, we resolved the possible aspect under the uh, okay. um, so, so then that same thing is what that yeah. is different places. Yeah, so uh, two of them, I believe, give the uh, same result. Two of them, so the, the two of them are in the same uh, several orbits, which means that there's something actually in the same thing. I believe they should give the same result. So you're, you're having a wrong on kind of the uh, longer things in there because they don't have to. And the other two for the hydro are actually uh, uh, not unitary. And for those guys, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't really know. 
I suspect that so for lower uh, order of the uh, GM, that the solutions are put into uh, nice uh, parallel objects, which are commuted into each other by some function of the uh, double group. But then uh, for things like D9, D11, they exist uh, uh, for the circuit to be very different to the GM. So for those, I expect those computers to be very different to so you might have to apply to the 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 of the So your results were consistent with those two, but other results have been Yeah, our result is yeah, yeah. The first three, I think, uh, the first three results that we could not consistent with the uh, And the other two, I don't know what you're pointing to, but the paper and the yes. yes. the European collaboration. Yes. 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 Okay, well, it sounds good. Yeah. The, the power value, which is greater than C equals C, slightly greater, but with the error interval that includes the future. So we thought that this uh, this indicates that you know this thing. So those results are not so so two so, out of the three results are consistent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other views? Uh you mean apart from more views than the results? No, no, not really. So the outcome hurdle is the statistical error of the question. Six. Oh yeah. So one thing, one thing to do is just to to run and run the same parallel, and that can possibly be done. So the long longest can I think run for two weeks, and I think faster we can run for one week. Like this changing the length, uh, change, it changes slightly, but one thing that is uh, a little bit so, one thing that goes along the line of the kind of by similar is that in all three cases, in all three lengths, the C may have changed slightly different. The error rate, of course, is this in all three cases, the actual frequency is a little bit different. Do you actually get information on the performance function, or do you just have that? Uh, so, so we, we, we're just going to uh, identify some states as the descendant of another state and using that information to fix. You don't actually. Yeah, yeah, you only, you only get like energy you can uh, change using like a certain upper diagonal, and then you have to get the descendant of energy. Yeah, uh, for the I would do, but uh, for the I mean, oh, if you need to insert some uh, operator that is in the yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Not sure if there will be there will be R B and the C and D one. Yeah, it seems like it would be interesting to know something about that. Yeah. And also, of course, some of our error things are the fact that we're using the states that to approximate the, the fusion change circuit state by adding a penalty change that predicts the invalid fusion change. And no matter how we change the penalty change, it's still going to some uh, minor. Uh, minor yeah, yeah, I think that's kind of people can correctly uh, find the bus they use in the non vector fusion change using other n plus the center of the way we use. Um, 
Thanks for starting it, yeah.